الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الأمين نبي الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين على آله وصحابته والتابعين لهم بإحسان لا يمد سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم قد مضى من درس إنما الأعمال بنيات خمس دروس والآن في السادس ونجعل خاتمة نرجو الله تعالى حسنها بوصية شيخنا شيخ المسلمين المراط الحاج رحمه الله تعالى ونفعنا ببركاته وهي وصية على قصرها نافعة 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 لمن ألقى السمع وهو شهيد لمن حضر عقله واستوعب معانيها وعمل بها كفته in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the all-merciful, the especially merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world. May His peace, blessings, mercy, honor, elevation, and protection be upon our Master Muhammad وسلم, and his noble family, companions, and followers until the Day of Judgment. The glory be to you, O Allah, and far from imperfection are you. We have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing and the all-wise. We are now in the sixth uh, uh, class of the 40 hadith of Imam al nawi and we are concluding this first hadith about intention, indeed actions are by their intention, with this excellent and precious, uh, invaluable, priceless advice of our Shaykh and the Shaykh of the Muslims uh, uh, in their entirety, Shaykh Murab al Hajj, may Allah's mercy be upon him. Uh, and we are will share this as the advice that will conclude in the six, this, uh, this six um, uh, uh, now the sixth uh, installment of this discussion of this hadith despite the short one page advice that he gave it is such a tremendously valuable and beneficial it is like this is what he has uh, left behind for us to, to benefit all the Muslims who are willing to uh, take heed and understand, uh, they will have very much to, uh, 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 in fact, uh, to apply, and they will, in, uh, uh, it would be uh, in their best interest to live by this advice of Murad al Hajj. <laughs> وبقي يخالط الناس في هذه الأيام ويعمل بما به ليس له فهم بالشريعة. So whoever hears this advice and understands it, but still continues to just be like everybody else and mix with everybody else, then he has not understood the شريعة at all. نعم هذه نصيحة كتبها. He wrote this advice when he was nearly approximately 70 years old. About 70 years ago, excuse me. And if this is what... And if this is what was relevant and needed advice... In a place in the middle of nowhere, in a time that was 70 years ago, then how more relevant and pertinent should this advice be right now? But he gave this advice knowing and witnessing firsthand having walked for Hajj on foot from the end of Africa all the way to Mecca, from all the way the, 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 the western end of Africa, all the way across Africa and across uh, Egypt and Hijaz and so on to, to Mecca and Medina on foot. So he witnessed uh, and uh, returning, so th three year journey on foot witnessing the state of the Muslim Ummah this was the advice that he had to give later on in his life. Because the advice of a man without experience is not as good as a man who has 
ليس من رأى كما سمع ليس الخبر كالعيان أنتم الآن تعيشون في أمريكا لكن لا تعرفون أمريكا As we say seeing is believing To hear about something is not the same as seeing it first hand Right now you guys live in America but you don't understand America You don't know it I challenge all of you you're not aware of the state of America You know that I know You know that I know now Yes I know that you know I know that you know that you do not know America I know, that, I know that you do not know America Yes? No, it's true, correct. You are born and raised in America, but you don't know America. Not at all. Uh, but if you think that you know it, then that's called compounded ignorance. لا تعرفون دولتكم وتعتقدون أنكم تعرفون. You don't know it, but you think you know it. أنا عندما أقص عليكم من عجائب ما رأيت هنا في أمريكا فإذا أنتم لا تعرفونها أصلاً. I'll tell you some of the things that I have seen here and witnessed here, and you'll realize that you maybe didn't understand. You didn't realize. You didn't understand the whole country that you're living in. لأن الأشياء العلماء قالوا إن ما تعرف الأشياء بأضدادها. The scholar said that things are truly understood or are known by comparing them to their opposites, in contrast to their opposites. So to understand uh, America, then you have to contrast it with uh, the proper Islam, and you'll be able to see that contrast and where everything falls into place or against what is... Uh, so don't compare it and don't contrast it to the state of the Muslims. The Muslims around the world who aren't in America are trying to, are trying to follow the, the footsteps of the American, uh, the American Muslims. This man right here next to me was with me in Medina about like three weeks ago. We left the visitation of the Prophet from the door of As-Salam. As-Salam to who? The, the Prophet وسلم, the master of the creation. We uh, entered into a taxi that was being driven by a young Saudi man. And he was uh, talking to me uh, uh, first. And he could tell that I'm from Mauritania. It doesn't need any description. So then uh, when we got to this guy He said and you where are you from? I told him. Uh, I told him uh, that uh, that uh, we are from uh, 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 Mauritania and من اللي كان في الأمام. Mauritania and from America. هذا أمريكي. أقول في Mauritania ومدينة وأمريكا نعم. There was a, a Medina and Mauritanian, so uh, the Sheikh responded uh, from Mauritania, from Medina, and from America. <laughs> he was like an American, welcome, Hayakallah. <laughs> and the rest of his words. <laughs> 
And the rest of the words <laughs> each one exceeding the next. <laughs> that he was just exactly what he was looking for and what wishing for and hoping for. It's like when Musa alayhi salam traveled yeah. so far and finally <laughs> <he> met <laughs> This is what we were seeking that he said. This is uh, this is the the state of the Muslims. If this is in, forget about just an average Muslim country. This is in Al Medina, the city of the Prophet where the Quran was revealed. The, uh, been brought down. This is, this is a land that Jibreel came down to day and night bringing the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He just forgot about the rest of the world. He, and, and, and it's like his whole world was filled with happiness. Now that he had somebody from America or from <laughs> California. <in his laughs> so I was surprised by his, <laughs> level, of, his level of foolishness. <laughs> what kind of stupidity is this? <laughs> what kind of inferiority complex can somebody have in Medina to have this attitude? <laughs> Unfortunately, all of you are in the midst of this attitude. And so you do not understand the reality of the world. Whoever knows the reality of the world, let him speak about it. Whoever doesn't, then let him stay quiet. وما هي حالته وفهم أنه عالم غربي يجري خلف الغربي فلا صاحب من يريد الغربة. So in contrast to that, look at what Sheikh Murad al Hajj, who traveled the world and saw the world with his own eyes, and then is advising the people. لما انتهت الإمارة الإسلامية نهائيا. And once he saw that the leadership, the united leadership of the Muslims was over. And and uh, and the Muslims had become fragmented, and this is the time. The he saw that the people had become like uh, sheep. The Muslims had become like sheep, being herded around. Then he realized that this was the time of the strangers. So he would advise the people who seek to be those strangers, who are the only ones who are saved in this time. <laughs> Uh, let me just change it so the screen doesn't turn off. So he, it's a very concise advice that he has taken piece by piece from uh, the, uh, the, the Qur'an and Sunnah and from the Can statements of the scholars, exactly, piece by piece, uh, uh, to apply uh, what is most relevant for somebody who is alive today to approach their life and approach their, their, their deen with. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد فانه صلى الله عليه واله وسلم قال ان الدنيا دار من لا دار له ولها يجمع من لا عقل له وقال القائل وانما غنيمه الانسان شبابه والكسر في التوان فاوصي نفسي واوصيك بوصيه الله تعالى للاولين والاخرين ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان اتقوا الله وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثروا من ذكر هذه من لذات أكثروا من ذكر هذه من لذات وليس بعد الموت من قرار 
إلا بدار الخلد أو بالنار فإياك ومخالطة أهل الزمان فإياك ومخالطة أكثر أهل الزمان فإن الغزالي في القرن الخامس قال احذر متفقهة زمانك فإن ما هم ذئاب في ذياء فالمتعين على الإنسان أن يصرف العمر بتعلم العلوم النابعة وجهاد النفس في العمل بما علم فإن الناس الآن يزعمون أنهم علماء وليس الأمر كذلك فإن العالم من يخشى الله كما قال الحسن البصري حين قال له شخص الفقهاء لم يقولوا ذلك فقال له وهل رأيت فقيها قط إنما الفقيه من يخشى الله تعالى لله وإياك من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون هذه العبارات من فهم العربية قبل أن ندقق معانيها وأشربت عقله كذلك So these few statements, for the one who understood Arabic, even before we go into detail or explain anything, if somebody understood it and it was absorbed in his mind, that's enough for him. قال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما بعد فإنه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الدنيا دار من لا دار حتى تفهم عندما تفهم أن الدنيا دار من لا دار له ممكن تفهم معك من التحذير عنها So he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Amma ba'd, the Prophet ﷺ said, this world is a home for the homeless. So now once you begin, basically you're beginning the advice from him, you want to receive that advice, you have to agree on the foundation, the foundation over the discussion here in the advice is that this world is, is not a home for those who want a true home, this world is only a home for the homeless. بعد ما تفهم أن الدنيا دار من لا دار له ممكن أن نزهدك بها أو نحذرك من أبناء الزمان أو نقول لك اهرب بنفسك لأنك أنت علمت أن هي دار من لا دار له. So once you have realized that this world is not a goal in itself and not sought after in itself and the one who succeeded in it has nothing, that this is a home for the homeless, then we can talk about uh, uh, who to avoid and talk about the mentality of the people and talk about the fake scholars and talk about all of these things. ممكن نقول لك اهرب من الناس. Then I can tell you to run away from the people and run away from them. Then you can begin to understand the Prophet's advice, turn away from all the groups. To leave a, a, a home for the homeless is something that should be easy. خوف أن تخالفهم أنت تعلم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قالك ابتعد منهم وهذه دار من لا دار. What is causing you to be around those people and to seek after those things that are destroying you is simply because you're afraid what are people going to say or hey but everybody is doing it and so on. وتبقى لا علاقة لك طيب. Once once there's no concern for you and the connection with with people uh, 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 when it contradicts the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not is irrelevant to you then we can uh, talk about what you can do you're just worried about what people are going to think about you or they're going to stop talking to you or cut you off or reject you and so on that's a fact that's a factor for you uh, but now you have uh, agreed that, that, that this world is a home for the homeless. If you lost a homeless person's home, uh, would you be sad? This world, is it... Is it uh, 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 when we say this world is a home for the homeless, are we just talking about homes? Or we just thought, or we thought, does the dunya include people and 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 property and and uh, and everything? It means everything. Okay, all of that is something for the people who have nothing. Whoever has it has nothing. What are you leaving behind? Nothing for then. What are you getting? And where are you turning away from it and facing? The, the home for the one who has a home, an eternal home, doesn't get taken away. Increasing, true, uh, permanent, an eternal abode.
ومن يبيع آشرا منه بعاشره يبي له الغبر في بيع وسلم. Whoever sells out his future for just some for something right now, this person is cheated both in the the sale and the exchange. لا خلاص لا طيب دار من لا دار له سنتوافق عندما نحذره أو سنن ما نرغبه نرغبك في ما لا في دار في دار البقاء نحذرك من إيش الاغترار بهاي دار من لا دار له. So then this starts off on the foundation of what? Encouraging you to, fa- to, 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 to make your purpose the home that you will be residing in forever and to turn away from that which will be taken away from you anyways. One of the followers, uh, this is the advice of Al-Khawlani, who is one of the followers of the companions, from the righteous, and say it long as you can. Daily, he would give away all his income for charity, and he wouldn't leave anything. And he had daughters. Alhamdulillah. So uh, uh, he would give anything extra to charity. He wouldn't keep anything at the end of the day. And he had daughters. And it is a man's nature to be more uh, 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 soft towards his daughters. Because men, uh, uh, you know, maybe they can be tough or t- have it rough for a while and so on. And they're able to withstand those difficult circumstances, but a guy doesn't want to see his daughters. But for a woman, you know, it's tough to have them under the sun and the, the you know, the, uh, the, the difficulty and hunger and so on. Of course. Of course, you know, this is a woman, this is not, we're not talking about, um, you know, uh, Western norms, we're talking about reality. I'm not talking about something, an Ill- illogical norm. I'm, I'm not talking about people's fantasies and fairy tales and imagination. <laughs> imagination is one thing, but reality is something else. So his daughter is actually... Uh, uh, they took him to court. They took him to the judge of Medina. But the Qadi of Medina was the Qadi of Medina. Meaning the real meaning of a Qadi, a true judge. So once the court was going to start the session, Al-Khawlani started to speak. He said, Oh judge, when have you ever seen somebody who is moving from one home to another home? Would he leave anything? And he has no intention to return to that first home. Would he leave anything behind in that first home? He said, no. And he wants to leave a city behind and never return to that city again. Is he going to leave anything behind in that city or send it all forwards? He said, of course he wouldn't leave anything behind. He said, I'm moving to the hereafter and this world, I'll never return to it again. So he told the daughters, the judge told the daughters, he, he has, he's proven you wrong. He's, 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 he's uh, proven his case. Case closed. So then, on that foundation, immediately after saying here in the advice, uh, the, this world is a home for the homeless, then he said, and for it, the, the one, who, only the mindless person would, would gather for the sake of this world. لذلك الحديث الماضي الذي بدأنا به قال فمن كانت هجرته إلى الله ورسوله فهجرته إلى الله ورسوله ومن كانت هجرته للدنيا يصيبها وامرأة يكحها هجرته لا هجر له من يجمع ولا عقل له. So this is all just general about this world at any time in any place and it is an explanation of the hadith uh, that that uh, the, uh, that whoever's journey is then for Allah and His Messenger, then His journey is for Allah and His Messenger. He is seeking that which is eternal, for eternal. Uh, but 
whoever his journey is for something for worldly to attain or a woman to marry, then his journey is <laughs> you know, is, is, is it starts and ends there. Um, <laughs> so this is the meaning of the one who gather the one who gathers this world uh, 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 and s strives to gather from this world is only the mindless one. <laughs> You're striving your whole life what for the sake of marrying somebody or uh, or to have things in this world. All your ya efforts are that. We'll say yes. Uh, ya Rasul Allah, Allah, you mean us. You mean us. You're speaking to us. All of you who are in front of me, what, what percentage of your day uh, is spent doing what? Uh, everyone who's here. Oh, men. Where are you working hard for? What are you, you're, you're thinking, oh, how am I going to take care of my wife and my children? For it, the one, mind, only the mindless one gathers. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu tajarrada min malihi arba'a marrati. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, gave away everything, and gave away his fortune four times in his life. Meaning that, that he amassed it and then he gave it all away leaving behind. So then the Prophet ﷺ one time asked him, Oh Abu Bakr, what did you leave behind for your family? He said, I left behind for them Allah and His Messenger. Why? Because he is the master of the migrators and he was uh, the, uh, migrating to Allah and his messenger. He was certain in his heart and he knew for a fact that if he left behind for his family Allah and his messenger, then that would be sufficient for them. That would take care of everything for them. He doesn't want to be a mindless person who is the kind of person who <laughs> So he was the leader of the wise people. Hassan al-Basri said from his experience, the, the wisest people are two, a man and a woman. Uh, for, out of the men, it was Abu Bakr uh, for, for making Umar the Khalifa after him. And from the women was Bilqis. Do you know what uh, Bilqis's uh, view was? She, she, she uh, 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 destroyed the, the, the minds of the, 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 the men who were with her, or the half men who were with her. Ambiguous uh, gendered uh, people who were with her. <laughs> as soon as uh, Sulaiman السلام, sent his, sent his uh, letter warning them and, and threatening them, um, uh, they proved their reality. Simply, he said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Don't, uh, don't try to raise yourselves over here. Inna hu min Sulaiman. Hada kitab. And come uh, and come in submission. Inna hu. Hada risa. Hada risa min Sulaiman. It says it is from Sulaiman, and it, and the message is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Do not uh, try to rise over me. And, and, and so she told her people, she was the queen, she told her people, uh, what do you say about this matter? She gathered all of these men, what, what should we do? She said, give me your opinions in this matter, uh, I'm not going to make any decision until you witness. So look at their foolish response. The response of men, but they were not truly men. They 
They said, you know, we're so powerful. We have, a, we're very powerful, and we're able. We have a lot of light. We're able to. We know we have some. Uh, but the matter is yours. You're the one who. Uh, so, so tell us what you want to do. So she was a woman who was uh, turning uh, to these men to uh, give her their opinion, and instead they they left the matter to her. What a terrible opinion that they had. Hadith Sahih, a, a, a nation or a group will not succeed uh, leaving their matter to a woman. This is why, unfortunately, the men don't even rise up to the status of being in half of, of a child. Uh, still waiting to be uh, bossed around by women their whole lives. Because his wife is his wife. Because what you accept <laughs> you and understand all you say and, and, and repeat, <laughs> what you say and what you repeat and what you apply and what <laughs> you pass on <laughs> is, is this uh, saying of happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. This is what you have your chain of narration in. Every father gives it to his son and every teacher gives it to his student. She responded such a response that showed them their foolishness. This is why uh, 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 al -Basri al -Basri al -Basri said that she was the most wise of all women. She basically, she said that indeed the kings, once they enter a, a, a city, they 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 destroyed. They destroyed, and they make and the people who are the highest in that city become the lowest. They will uh, disgrace us all uh, in, within moments. And will uh, destroy the. Uh, the this was Sulaiman who was feared by jinn and humankind and even the shayateen. The, the devils were chained by him and, and, and So this is this beyond your comprehension. You can't even imagine what are you, what are you saying? This is uh, So she gave them her a, a decision. That she said, so I'm going to send to him a gift and see what they do with that gift. And basically judge their reaction, judge what we should do based on how they treat that gift that we send them. So once that gift reached Sulaiman, he said, are you really giving me money? He said, are you giving me money? Right, he, the king of the world from the east to the west. What are they, <laughs> what are they going to give him? <laughs> Wasn't a, a king of America or Europe. <laughs> the king of the east to the west. <laughs> he says yes, it's yes. If he says no, it's no. Every, uh, all of the humans and jinn, they, they say yes or no based on his command. He said, are, are you really giving me money? Because uh, what Allah has given me is better than, than what he has given you. Uh, and he, told that, uh, he said, actually, go back and take this gift back to your people. Maybe th they're going to enjoy it. He said, let them enjoy it. Maybe th th this is something that they would enjoy. 
So go back to them and we're going to follow you with such an army that they have no way. There's no way that they can And we're going to remove them from their, their, their uh, uh, as, as humiliated and, and belittled. And this is what she was expecting. She wanted to see is he truly that man that she thought that he was going to be or is he not? So then he knew what she was doing when she sent that gift and he knew her reaction. So then he told his, uh, after the messenger left, he said, he said, oh, uh, uh, his, his gathering, he said, oh, who's Ayyuhu. going to bring me her throne before they come to me in submission? <laughs> so one of the powerful jinn, he said, I will. Uh, I can bring you that throne before the end of this gathering. Before the, before the end, before you get up from this gathering. But this was not good enough. So then, uh, so then there was one who had knowledge from the book. Asif, in the Asif. Asif. Called Asif, and he, he said that I will bring it to you before you even, like if you raise your head and say, Ya Allah, before you lower your eyes to the ground. And immediately he saw that throne in front of him. One second. So then once he, saw that, once he saw that throne in front of him, he immediately, he said, this is from the bounty of my Lord to test me whether I will be grateful or ungrateful. He didn't reflect anything back on himself that look how great I am. Look how I'm a messenger, the king of the whole world, and so on. No, he said, This is from the bounty of my Lord. To test me. Will I be grateful or will I be ungrateful? And whoever is grateful, their gratitude benefits themselves. And whoever is ungrateful, Allah doesn't need them at all. Allah is needless and, 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 and generous. But the story goes on for a long. So when we say a home for the homeless, we mean not just a, a house or whatever, but if you had the whole kingdom of Namrud or the kingdom of Sulaiman, then still that is a home for the homeless, the world in itself. If you had everything. This is, where is Sulaiman now? Who the wind was tra traveling for him. And the humankind and jinn was in his service. Now it's just you're hearing, you're hearing about him as news, as, as information. And, and it's such a history that many people wouldn't even know about. And, and some people may not believe if they hear. Despite this tremendous power and, and, and kingdom, most people will not believe it. They'll believe what they hear on American news more than what they'll hear on the Quran. They'll, they'll, hear, they'll read the Quran, but they'll believe American news more than the Quran. Okay. Thank you very much, This is how Muslims are. Thank you very much. And, the, and after he mentioned the statement of the Prophet he said, 
And he mentioned this to his scholars. He's advising a young man here. He said, and and the uh, the scholars have said, meaning. The time to take advantage of for a human being is in their youth, and and is in their youth, and their loss is in procrastination. And this is what the, the Prophet ﷺ advised. He said, take advantage of your youth before your old age. But how, you, how do you spend your youth? Answer. Stanford Brooklyn uh, you know, you spend your youth in uh, Davis and Stanford and Berkeley, and then in 10 years, you're like, after you've done all what you've done, all sorts of nonsense and haram, then you're like, let me marry a woman and and and, and let me marry a woman so she can be my boss and buy a house. So I can I can listen to her orders and commands. That's right. So the time to take advantage of person, the time to take advantage of as a human being is in your youth. وفي آخر نقطة بعد أن تنهي مطابك من الفساد تملكك امرأة وتدفع أقساط للبيت حتى يأتيك أجلك اليوم. So what, how do people spend that youth by setting themselves up for their future by you know going to uh, school and then to uh, you know some university. ما فعل ما فعل. And then you know getting married and and then spending the rest of your life paying uh, uh, payments on your house. تخدم زوجته. Serving your wife. And you cannot even go to the bathroom without asking her first. You have to ask her, hey, I need to go to the bathroom. No. That's right, yes. I'm not a good one. I'm so she doesn't get mad, like, hey, where are you going? Oh, I'm just going to the bathroom. So you just say it in advance. Forget about going to the bathroom. If I was to turn, needed to do something, if I was going to, I had the intention and I was going to go to Hajj. If I turned to my wife and I was like, okay, look, I'm going to go to Hajj, is that okay? Then I would, uh, I, I would denounce my man. Denounce my, my being a role of being a husband and, and everything. Then I would divorce her that same day. I would tell her, I'm sorry, I'm not fit to be a man or a husband. I fooled your family. Sorry, your, your parents gave you to a guy who's not a man. So it's better for you, instead of being married to me, for you to be single. Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm not exaggerating now, <laughs> man. وإنما غنيمة الإنسان شبابه والخسر بالتواني فما هي النتيجة؟ So what is the outcome then? وأوصي نفسي وأوصيك بوصية الله الأول والآخر. وأوصي نفسي أولا. What is the advice he says? So advice. So take advantage of your youth and beware of procrastination. All your losses in procrastination. 
Uh, and he said, so I advise myself first. And I advise you to have taqwa of Allah to be mindful. I advise you to uh, the same advice that Allah has given the first people and the last people. And he quoted the verse from the Quran that and we have advised those who were before you and we have advised you to be to have taqwa of Allah. Taqwa is a fear Allah. It doesn't mean fear Allah. No. هذا تفسير خطأ. That's a wrong translation. لما تتصاعق الغنم تخاف الله تعالى، ولما يترعد الغنم تخاف الله تعالى والبقر. Once there's uh, you know uh, uh, thunder and lightning, then even the sheep and the goats uh, and the cows are afraid of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. هذا هذا تفسير التقابي في الله. Anybody can fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى. بهاي تخاف الله. The disbelievers fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and call to Allah when they're in their greatest emergencies and calamities. So this is a wrong explanation, fear Allah. This is how you hear taqwa translated, fear Allah, fear Allah. You don't have anything to fear Allah. You don't have anything to fear Allah. What are you going to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are you going to protect yourself with? You have nothing to protect yourself with from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person tells an ignorant uh, individual, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean for me? What does that mean? Feel, is it a feeling of fear? Have a feeling of fear? Is that what you're saying? Do you know what taqwa means? What, what word is it? Uh, what's its root word? It's a shield to protect yourself. Do you know the meaning of taqwa then? So what does that mean? Uh, the, the shield itself is knowledge and to have taqwa is to grasp that knowowledge and to act upon it. So then uh, Imam Bukhari he said the chapter of knowledge comes before action. So taqwa requires having that knowledge and then acting upon it. That you do not do any intention or any action, even spending a time with your wife before you learn uh, uh, the, the knowledge that you need for that. Even people, uh, every night, even when they uh, are with their wife, they are doing so in a manner that is haram. Mm -hmm. People often, they, they, they do so without knowing the rules of, of uh, menstruation uh, and without knowing the rules, her rules of purification. So if her purification is imperfect, then it's haram for them to be together uh, at all. Naam. تقوى الله تعالى اجتناب وامتثال الأوامر تعلم العلوم وامتثال الأوامر واجتناب الأوامر هذا هو التقوى. So تقوى then is learning the rulings and applying them. وأوصيك وأوصي نفسي ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن تقوا الله. وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم أكثروا من ذكر هذه من الله. أكثروا. And he said and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. In abundantly, often mention uh, the destroyer of pleasures, meaning death. What does it mean to say? Often mention the, the destroyer of pleasures, the, the, the thing that cuts off one's pleasure. For if you are in a tight situation, it makes things, it opens things up. And if you're in a if things are too open, then it narrows your focus. But as for you, go to your funerals. What is the situation? At the, at the funeral, at the grave itself, while you're, you're praying over that janaza, what, are, what is the state of people all adorned and dressed up in uh, cars and, uh, and fashion and everything? Tell me what you are doing in your own funerals even. 
الذين يصلون على الجنائز نساء كاسيات عاريات ورجال لا يصلون. The women coming to those funerals uh, uh, clothed but naked, and the men over there, uh, you know, what is the state of their wudu and what is the state of their prayer? Are people even thinking about that this is the destroyer of pleasures or not? Without reflection, then even the death itself and the funeral procession and the clothes a person wears and everything, now they'll be encouraged that next time I better be driving the nicer car and I should have the nicer <laughs> car. And and so, 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 all those you know, people can see me. And so, it's encouraging people to increase in their misguidance and their heedlessness. Uh, last year, a young Arabic uh, man passed away here in San Jose. Who are the people who came to the the, uh, the in, 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 in Livermore? With the family of the deceased, Muslim person. His friends came and everybody brought their girlfriend with them. To the Islamic cemetery in Livermore. This is the destroyer of pleasures. This is the gathering of sins. The Prophet said to saturate your gatherings. Saturate, saturate uh, and fill your gathering with the mention of the destroyer of pleasures. What does that mean to saturate it with? That means it cuts the edge off of that gathering. That the if in that gathering you're heedless. Then what happens? You may increase in your love. You talked about the world. You your love for the world increase. Your love for worldly things and your attachment to increase by the mention uh, of of death. Then, then you're removing and increasing the mention of death. You're removing that effect of that gathering. That uh, unfortunately, people even at the, at the cemetery, at the funeral, at the grave, they they want to have, to have a very nice stone and to bring all sorts of flowers to make it look <coughs> on the outside, uh, if superficial, even about death. To make it look uh, uh, nice on the outside. <laughs> and even saying, you know, let us you know, kiss the, the, the dead person before we bury them. <laughs> let us look at this person before. <laughs> and people have a viewing and they put... Uh, viewing. <laughs> yeah. Right now the trends are... <laughs> that, that this guy is an imam. And 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 subhanAllah, now the, the Muslims are just they don't know anything about funerals, so they try to do what they see on movies and TV that kuffar people do. So they have a viewing before the funeral. So they have the dead person there in, in a suit and in makeup. Dead dead guy. And then just so people can look at them. And then they go and they cry in their different uh, you know, strange clothes. SubhanAllah then go in and they bury them in the nicest coffin that they can. You know all these different communities, all these different uh, nationalities and ethnicities. All of you, these are your people are doing this. وحينما يدخلون في القبر شيخ يخافون يترددون أن أن يزيلوا التراب لا يريدون يقع عليه ترابهم سيخرجون وهذا يمنون القبر التراب. So many times I've seen in the in the in the burial that the family when they bring the the body into the grave they're so careful just to not let any dirt fall on him when they know five seconds later they're gonna go out of the grave and it's gonna be filled with dirt. This is called true heedlessness. In the moment, not knowing what death means. What does death mean? 
لا يعرفون الموت. They don't know that. قل إن الموت الذي قل هذا خبر من رب العالمين. But Allah says say. إن الموت الذي تفرون منه إنه ملاقيكم ثم تردون إلى عالم الغيب والشهادة فينبئكم بما كنتم تعملون. Allah says say indeed that death that you run away from indeed it will reach you. And, uh, and, you will be, and you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the seen. Meaning he knows where you were and what you were Where were you with your girlfriend in Davis? What, what were you doing under the sheets? And, uh, but he will tell you that which you used to do. Where were you? What did you spend your seconds on, your moments and your breaths? He will inform you of everything that you used to do. Every single thing that you used to do. And you, went, and you went there and you did this and you saw this and you thought this and, and this is what you were planning and this is what you were thinking in your mind and this is what you intended. No need for any angels as witnesses or any witnesses or any messengers. Allah knows. So he said, since that is death. Well, there is no home for a person after, this, قرار, after death. There is no home, there is no abode uh, 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 for a person except, except for the uh, home, uh, the eternal home of paradise or hellfire. It's one or another. This uh, death is a door. And uh, everyone is walking through it. I wish my poetry could express what comes after it. The, uh, the home, what comes after that door, the other side of that door, if you are obedient to Allah, uh, 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 then it is, it is gardens of paradise uh, and a station and status. And if you are contrary to his commands, then hellfire. هما محلان ما للناس غيرهما فاختر لنفسك أي 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 الدار تختار. They are the two destinations. There is no third. So choose for yourself which one you want to work. ما زلت موجود الآن في الحياة. اختار لي. You're still alive now. You still have the choice at this moment. نعم. وليس بعد الموت من قرار إلا بدار الخلد أو النار. فإياك نعم طيب هو لا نصر يبين شو اسمه رجل عجيب رجل حضره حضره. so he is preparing the context. هذا لأن قبل هذا ما يمكن تحضر. everything that was mentioned so far is just the context that applies to every single time and place. why is he preparing all those things? now he's beginning his advice of actually what to do. So because of all of this then, what should you do? He said, beware of mixing with most people today. 99% of people, beware of spending time with them and being around them. He said, because all the way back in the 5th century, Imam al-Ghazali said, beware of the scholars of today, for they are wolves in sheep's clothing. If this was the seat of the scholars in the 5th century, then what about the, the, the masses and everybody else? And this was the 5th Hijri century. Thousand years ago. 
But if I tell you today, beware of 99% of people today, you'd say, this guy's crazy. He's crazy, he's exaggerating. We have the Council of Scholars in Freedom. The capital of the scholars, the whatever that is in San Francisco. <laughs> MashaAllah, forget about it being known as the the Safullah, the destination for homosexuals around the world. This is no that the, the destination, the capital of the scholars. One young Afghan man told me. That you know, today I had breakfast with 14 scholars. I told him, Wow, in my whole life I haven't seen 14 scholars. I have never sat down with three scholars at the same time. <laughs> MashaAllah, he was at a restaurant here and had coffee and food with no, no, nowhere but a restaurant. How can I believe that even a scholar was in a, a restaurant in Freeland? So I said, of course, there's no need for any investigation because he already admitted it. He said that scholar, How can I believe that a scholar was in a restaurant in Fremont? To get up in the morning early to go to a restaurant so they can have different kinds of pizza. <laughs> worried about food. <laughs> so I understood because the, the, the description wasn't wasn't fitting. I know that America does not have scholars, but he, but he, you know, he explained the details his own self. So he answered himself. You know, thank you very much. He, he, he saved us the trouble. Fourteen scholars in the area do a star together one second. MashaAllah. Hani Alukum. Congratulations. Hani and the America, MashaAllah. Hani Bakat, Ruka Agna Sawyer. Congratulations to America, this tiny Bay Area. Hani Mishta Abu Yotwa in Medina. MashaAllah. I don't know about fourteen scholars gathering in the Medina. Wakat Ali, MashaAllah Kadiri. That's a lot. This is a special kind of blessing. He said, so beware of most of the people in uh, t today, for they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, for, for Imam Ghazali said in the 5th century, uh, uh, that beware of the scholars of uh, this time because they are wolves in sheep's clothing. So what is the solution now? So he warned what not to do. So now he's saying what to do. He said, so what is required, what is, has become compulsory upon every individual is to spend his time, is to spend his life learning that beneficial knowledge. So it's necessary for every individual to spend his time, to spend his life learning beneficial knowledge, the knowledge that will, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you, save yourselves. So yourselves and your families from a fire. 
تتأكد أنك عندما تفرغ من الصلاة صليت صلاة صحيحة موافقة لما قال الله ورسوله. The correct beliefs and the correct worship, so that you know when you finish your prayer that the actions of your prayer you know for sure without doubt when you finish your prayer that they were that your prayer is actually correct according to all of its conditions that you know and its requirements that you know. But I think that forget I, 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 I believe you know you don't just think that your prayers are correct, you think your prayers are accepted. You're praying without knowledge and thinking that your prayer is accepted. And then and after that, holding it as a favor, as astaghfirullah, like you did a favor to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, oh Allah, I, uh, I prayed for this year, uh, this many years, and you never, I never got married. Thank you very much. I was told those words exactly. I prayed until I was 30 something, and, I, and Allah never gave me a husband. And then she said no to every proposal until she was 30 years old. Then when she's 35, she stopped praying because she said Allah didn't uh, didn't give her a husband yet. But it's okay; she'll still give Allah a chance by still making du'a even though she's not praying. She wants to be doctor. So she said no until she was 30. Mm-hmm. This is not one person. This is the the the, the attitude of the people in general. This is just one example. Everyone is satisfied, staying in a sinful state, not changing, not willing to change the way that they are. With certainty, I'm going to stay, I'm not going to change these things about me, while thinking that, you know, my heart is pure and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept me. أن يصرف العمر في تعلم العلوم النابعة وجهاد النفس بالعمل بما علم. So what is incumbent upon an individual is to spend their time learning beneficial knowledge and and applying that which they have learned. ثم حذره تحذيرا ثانيا. قال وما ماذا بما علم؟ بما علم خلق خلي ما علم. المتعين عن سرعة يصرف العمر. I'm struggling against their self to fight against themselves to make sure that they apply that information that they had learned. And he explained again, he said for uh, again, the, the people today, he said this 70 years ago, he said for the people today, they claim to be scholars while not Beware of following them in any of their matters that they do. He said they say that they're scholars, but they are not. That is contrary to reality. So then you see the reality of that statement that look, there are 14 scholars who were in that gathering. In that 14 scholars in this room. Because the people today, uh, 70 years ago, he was referring. He wasn't referring to ignorant people claiming to be scholars. He was referring to the to the scholars who had knowledge at that time, but they're disqualified from being scholars. According to the, Quran, according to the Quran, 
Because the, uh, Man alim al-ilma wa Allah. the Quran says that the knowledge, the scholar is the one who fears Allah. Man alim al-ilma wa Allah. The one who learned the knowledge and fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and applies That that mountain of knowledge that they had acquired is, is a weight over their heads that they fear Allah. Azqadahu, azqadahu, that they made them uh, humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearful of Allah. And Imam Malik said that it has reached me that the scholars are asked just like the prophets are asked. <laughs> they will be asked on the Day of Judgment, did you fulfill your <laughs> message? <laughs> did you answer the question truthfully? Did you teach the right thing? Did you hold off and say, I don't know? Did you? They'll be asked by Allah SWT about this, not did you have breakfast with 13 other scholars and free lunch. Allah will ask them about that breakfast and try <laughs> to <laughs> The 14 scholar breakfast. And, and the different shayateen that were with around the students. Two of the students. I hate the students. I hate the students. How do you still be like this? How do you believe the If I believe in, in America and 14 scholars, I'm stupid. I'm worse than that. And as what mina him was what mina good was what mina a hasha. That if I truly believe that there is 14 scholars, oh, 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 I don't know, or even one in San Francisco having breakfast in uh, you know, three months, then I'm worse than any creature. Had the a hasha, even in any insect, hasha, not in Hamma, Hassan, cockroaches. And he, now he quotes again to verify that statement he said uh, uh, that Al Hassan al Basri, at the time of the Tabi'een, like right after the companions, and someone told him, and he heard somebody saying, the scholars didn't say that. So then, Hassan al-Basri turned to him and he said, have you ever actually seen a scholar, even? Indeed, the scholar is the one who fears Allah. Do you understand the meaning of this beneficial and concise advice? I will conclude our gathering with this and the discussion of this hadith with this and I ask Allah to make us from the people who hear the words and follow the best of them. Amen. I will quote the words of the poet who said uh, you have made them here if you have called those who are alive but unfortunately, there is no uh, life to the ones who you are calling. If they are alive, then they would have definitely heard your call, but there is no life for those who you are calling. So to Allah and we belong into Him. Allahumma ajurna fi masaibina wa awwaluha dinuna. اللهم أجرنا في مصائبنا وعاقب لنا خيرا منها وأولها ديننا اللهم أجرنا في مصائبنا وأولها ديننا oh Allah reward us for our calamities and the first of them is our deen and replace us with that which is better قال الإمام الشافعي صاحبت الصوفية سنتين الإمام الشافعي said I spent time with the Sufis for two years لكن ليس صوفي الآن not what we mean by Sufi today كل ما يقال له الآن صوفي Anyone who is saying we're Sufis or Salafis or Malikis or whatever today, people they all these titles, uh, but in reality they are. 
قال صاحبت الصوفية سنتين فاستفدت منهم جملتين النفس إن لم تشغلها بالحق شغلتك بالباطل that the uh, the self if you do not busy yourself with that the truth it will it will busy you with with uh, 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 nonsense with uh, falsehood what is the truth right the scholar just said it he said that it is incumbent upon an individual to spend their time on what? On acquiring knowledge and struggling against themselves to be able to apply it. And to uh, and beware of, of uh, mixing with the majority of people. Not being like them, but even mixing with them. Don't come close to them in the first place. That is the truth according to the Prophet ﷺ. Where he said, uh, stay away from all the groups. All the groups stay away from them. All these different types of groups. Don't listen to them in the first place. Do not subscribe to them. Whatever title and group, no matter what it is, no matter what it's claiming to be, beware of them. And don't subscribe to that group just because they have a fa fancy name. Because those are titles, although the title may be noble, but the name, but the meaning is not there. The, meaning has, the reality has nothing to do with the title that they're claiming. It is a false testimony. So Imam Shafi'i said, I learned from those two years uh, 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 that if you do not busy yourself with the truth, that with that, then it will busy you with falsehood. And that's what it is. We are, we are such and such group that when we fill our message, uh, there's not even space for the angels. There was not even space for uh, one person to stand in the message. What was there for iftar? Afghan food from that restaurant. Or Lebanese food. The food and filling the gaps and filling the lines. That your nafs will busy you with a falsehood. Because you have not uh, busied it with the truth. So what is the second lesson that Imam Shafi'i learned? He said the time is like a sword. If you're not cutting, you're getting cut. Are you taking advantage of your time? Or are you getting this, or is time destroying you just by its passing? Time is shredding you in every possible way. It's passing by and, 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 and you remain in ignorance. It's passing by and you think you uh, uh, have done something great. You believe you have done something great. And, you, uh, and that you think you have done so much worship. And that you are the best people and you're the people who understand the, the guidance the most. Imam Shafi'i said, 
فما بعد فإن أحسن الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. لا تعتت نعم. ما بعد فإن أحسن الحديث كتاب الله. That you hear at the beginning of every khutbah the best of speech is the, 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 the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the word of Allah. And that's the word of Allah. He told you the, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't tell you the, the translated uh, words in, in foreign languages. Even when you're reading the Quran in, in Arabic, then you're still reading the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said uh, an Arabic Quran. He didn't say with an Arabic tongue, not, not a Quran an right? An Arabic language, right? والمصحف صفحاته كبير تحته أمام قدمي على السجادة يقرأ منه خلف الإمام في مسجد رسول الله بعين that I saw with my own eyes video a video of a guy أرسل هذه شخص قبل ليلة رمضان الأولى he was praying behind the imam and he ليلة رمضان الأولى المصحف on the floor on the first night of Ramadan the تحت تحته أمام قدمي right in front of his feet so he could يمره ويقرأ خلف الإمام so he can read behind the imam while he's praying واحد آخر قال لي اليوم هذا من مدينة رسول الله أنا شاهدت رجل يقرأ القرآن يقلبه بالريق يفعل and somebody else was saying that subhanAllah I saw someone in the Masjid of the Prophet reading the Quran and turning the pages by moistening his hand with his uh, saliva. So he said, why are you spitting on the Muslim? He said, oh, the Shaykh in front of me is doing the same thing. So he said, I went to the Shaykh and I told him, oh man, what are you, why are you doing this? He said, what's your delil that is wrong? Look at that. SubhanAllah, he's calling himself a shaykh and, uh, and he needs a, a delil. Why don't you spit on the Quran? Yeah. <laughs> so it was the guy that SubhanAllah, we were with him in Medina. So then he, his delil was, and here was his delil. He licked his finger and he touched the guy's face. <laughs> so then the sheikh told him, that's so rude of you. It's, this is like you mannerless person. He said, well, you're doing the same to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he left. <laughs> He told me this today. This is the Muslim Sheikh in, in the Messenger of the Prophet. What about in Fremont? What about one of 14 scholars in a restaurant? Don't be surprised if those people astaghfirullah have urine on their hands when they touch the Muslim. <laughs> So then, uh, 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 the, the t uh, time is like a sword. If you're not cutting, you're getting cut. And your, your nafs, uh, if you're not busy yourself with goodness and the truth and righteousness, then it busies you with falsehood. And this is why I do not go to your masajid, because a lot of it is just or all of it. Just the schools and messages and so on. Group. People are just busy in groups, or people are just busy with superficial acts, and nobody. 
and nobody is uh, focused on their reality and, and, and correcting uh -huh. one, the reality of one's worship. <laughs> so then that worship is all sorts of crime that they're committing in the rest <laughs> This is why I do not come close to you even. I'd rather commit zina 20 times a day, every day, than to be associated with your messages. To be in your state and to agree with you and to to support your 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 <laughs> I would I believe that it would it would be much easier for me to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having done this a crime of zina <laughs> <20 laughs> <times a day laughs> than then <laughs> to approve of your behavior in the your messages. <laughs> Do you know that I'm truthful in this? Yes, of course. No. اللهم اجعلنا من الذين قلت بهم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة أن لا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وابشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون. اللهم اجعلنا من الذين قلت بهم إن الذين سبقت لهم من الحسنى أولئك عنهم يبعدون لا يسمعون حسيسها وهم فيما اشتهت أنفسهم خالدون لا يحزنهم الجزاء الأكبر وتتلقاهم الملائكة هذه وكل اللي كنتم توعدون. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. سبحانك اللهم